So in this lecture, we'll look at the concept of asymmetric information in terms of marker failure. Now remember marker failure is when resources are allocated in the competitive market in a way that opportunity costs isn't minimized and living standards are not maximized. So what is asymmetric information? So let's look at the different definition of asymmetric information. So asymmetric information exists in a market where buyers lack complete information required to make rational decisions about uh, their resources. So exists where buyers lack sufficient or complete knowledge knowledge required to make decisions about how to allocate their resources. Now that's the formal definition of asymmetric information. So coming back to the preconditions which have to be met for a competitive market to exist. We have many buyers and sellers, consumer sovereignty, rational consumers, producers seeking to maximize their profit, perfect knowledge, perfect mobility of resources, and, re and that resources are interchangeable into various different um, uses. Those must be uses. Okay, and so these are the preconditions which must be met in order for a market to be competitive. So asymmetric information, in fact, counters this part of a, this precondition of a competitive market. And so resources are not allocated in their most efficient way because buyers lack the sufficient knowledge required to make decisions about how to allocate their resources so that their living standards are maximized. So I was reading up on a case in law and it really um, tif typified what asymmetric information was all about. There was this case about um, it was Van, de Van den Eschart versus Chapel or Chapel. And there's a case about Van den Eschart wanting to buy a house from Chapel. And let's say this house. This was ages ago. This was like 1930s. I don't, I don't know when it was, but it was ages ago. And let's say this house was only worth $20,000 at the time. And then an Eshart was willing to purchase the house for $20,000, and Chaffer was willing to sell the house for $20,000. But what happened was is that Chaffer didn't actually disclose to Van den Eshart that the house had termites. Now, naturally, you don't want a house that is infested with termites. So, in fact, the worth here that Van den Eshart actually placed on the house, which was $20,000, in fact, should have been somewhere around $10,000 for the land only. And what happened here was that Chaffel, Chaffel didn't disclose all the information required for Van den Eshart, Van den Eshart to make a rational decision about um, allocating his resources, which in this case was money, to purchase the house. And so here is a typical example of what asymmetric information is. So what we can do here is to apply this to a graph. So using Van den Eschart and Schaffel's case, we can apply this to a demand and supply graph. So the quantity demanded and the price at which it's demanded. And this can apply for every so market. And we have we have consumers which actually reached an equilibrium price as say $10. And this this is this could be any market, so it could be a market for shorts, shirts, etc. And depending on the equilibrium price, we can talk about different markets and how asymmetric information can affect different markets. So let's say the quantity supplied or demanded at $10 for this particular market on shirts or shorts is $10. And so what this means is that the marginal benefit consumers derive from buying this pair of, of shorts is $10 and that the marginal cost is also $10. So people would buy that. And people would allocate their resources or their money 
to this to pu to purchase these shorts because they see that they're going to derive some sort of benefit from buying this. And so what happens is that they would buy it. But what what suppliers could have not disclosed is that these shirts or shorts by um, washing them twice they wear out. And so they, 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 they break after washing them twice. And that's what the suppliers didn't actually disclose. So if the suppliers were to disclose that, the worth that consumers would have placed on this product would have been only $5. And this was represented by a shift of the demand curve to the left. It means that producers, consumers are seeing that this product is worthless and therefore they would demand a lower quantity. And so this is the actual equilibrium of this product. So consumers actually want to demand this much at Q2 at a price of $5. But since asymmetric information is occurring in this market, we can see that producers instead are selling it at $10 and consumers are believing that this shirt or short is worth $10. And so the quantity demanded and supplied is at Q1. So effectively we're seeing an overallocation of resources to this market of shirts. And this means that resources are being allocated inefficiently because we can see that the marginal cost of the shirt is $10, but the marginal benefit is actually $5, so that living standards in this case is not maximized. And by that I mean the marginal benefit is $5, is outweighed by the marginal cost. And so people could have spent that extra five dollars buying a lunch, for example, which would have um, improved their living standards um, twice as much as they would have using the five dollars or wasting the five dollars by purchasing the shirt. And so this is why the market in this case has failed to allocate resources efficiently. So the actual equilibrium should have been at this point right here, whereas what the market equilibrium now is at this point, at say E0, instead of being at E1. And so this is an example of asymmetric information, where buyers lack the sufficient or complete knowledge or information required to make rational decisions about how to allocate their resources so that living standards are maximized and also so that opportunity cost is minimized and so that is what asymmetric information is all about so to recap all these things again we have asymmetric information which causes buyers to allocate resources inefficiently because buyers have imperfect knowledge and this causes the resources to be inefficiently allocated to their to a non-productive use whereas they should be allocated to a productive use so that resources are efficiently utilized and that living standards are maximized and that opportunity cost is minimized